It is a pleasant, mildly warm morning on the 9th of June 721. Umayyad governor Al Sam emerged from his tent to take a morning stroll around the camp. For the last three months, his army had been encircling one of the most important cities in southern Gaul. Due to conflicting reports, he was still unsure as to how much longer the city was able to endure the siege. A good sign was that the defenders already seemed beleaguered and lacking food. Al Sam hoped that it would not take too long until the city would yield to his troops. Suddenly, he was approached by one of his advisors. A strong Christian mounted unit had been seen in the area not an hour ago. Al Sam sped up his pace, gesturing to summon nearby officers. The battle was about to begin. This video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a documentary focused streaming service with thousands of non fiction titles covering a wide range of topics. For example, fans of the channel will find a comprehensive section on world history covering all the major time periods. But there's also content on science, technology, nature, and more. For just $3 a month, you get full access to their film library. But if you use the link in the description below and use the promotional code BASSBATTLES, you'll get a 30-day trial absolutely free. Available on all major platforms, Curiosity Stream has some of the top award-winning documentaries in the world. Hit the link in the description below and see for yourself. It's spring of the year 718. For the last four years, the Frankish Kingdom, arguably the strongest of all post-Roman states in Western Europe, was torn by civil war fought between the most influential Frankish noblemen. This struggle for dominance came in the wake of the death of Pepin of Herstal, the de facto ruler of the Frankish realm. In the end, the one that emerged victorious from this conflict was one of Pepin's sons, Charles, a competent mayor of the Palace of Austrasia. But though the civil war came to an end, Charles still had to face a multitude of problems and insurgencies, as his rule outside of his power base in Austrasia was tenuous and uncertain at best. This weakening of central authority enabled some dukes and counts to seize more power in their respective domains and even consider throwing off Frankish overlordship. Undoubtedly, the most capable of them all was Odo, experienced Duke of Aquitaine who saw the political turmoil in Francia as an excellent opportunity to proclaim himself as an independent ruler as early as 715. At first, Odo supported the alliance that fought against the growing power of Mayor Charles, but when it was defeated in battle in 718, Odo swiftly adjusted to the new circumstances. In exchange for handing over the Merovingian prince, whom Charles needed to legitimize his rule, Odo received recognition as the independent ruler of Aquitaine. Thanks to his political and military prowess, across the first two decades of the 8th century, Duke Odo became one of the two most powerful people in Gaul, at least matching the potential of Charles. But by the time Odo had gained formal independence, a new threat was rising in the south, behind the peaks of the Pyrenees Mountains. During the time when Odo and Charles rose to prominence, their southern neighbor, the Kingdom of the Visigoths, was defeated and overran by the growing power of the Umayyad Caliphate. By the year 719, the Muslim troops under the Governor-General of Al-Sam ibn Malik were already making strides into Septimania, a fertile and urbanized region in southern Gaul, the last bit of land still held by the Visigoth Lord. Soon, being unable to withstand Umayyad pressure, its capital, the flourishing city of Nabon, fell to the invaders. The swift conquest of Septimania by the Caliphate was alarming for Duke Odo, who realized that the Umayyad expansion wasn't going to suddenly stop, as they now held an excellent position to launch raids deep into both Frankish and Aquitanian territory. Though now being in a favorable position, the Umayyad general Al-Sam took his time to settle a bit on the new territorial gains. Over the year 720, he rode back to Al-Andalus to gather more soldiers and prepare for future campaigns. These preparations didn't take long. Just after winter had passed, in early 721, Al-Sam was already back in Septimania with his army, 
launching an attack on the well-defended city of Carcassonne. Yet the formidable walls encompassing Carcassonne soon made Al-Sam reconsider his plans as he lifted the siege and marched his army northwest, hoping to take Toulouse, the capital of the Duchy of Aquitaine. Odo appeared to be surprised by this attack. He was probably present in the city when the Umayyad army approached it and organized the defensive effort of his men. But it became clear that Toulouse, despite its strong walls and solid garrison, would not be able to hold for long against the numerous Arab host that was both well-provisioned and equipped with siege engines. Knowing this, Odo rode out to scour every corner of his territory, urgently requesting every possible ally to gather an army strong enough to fend against the Umayyad threat. In the span of the next couple of months, Aquitanian nobles flocked under Odo's banner, determined to face their common enemy. Although no sources give any numbers as to the size of Odo's army, even with the widespread rallying of his liegemen, his host was most likely still considerably weaker compared to the invading force of the governor of Al-Andalus. To aid his efforts, Odo resorted to asking for help from the Frankish ruler Charles, pointing out that the Umayyad attack was a threat to the entire Frankish kingdom. While he might have been right, from Charles's point of view, things looked a bit different, as the latter saw Odo's ambition as a major threat to his rule and sought a way to simply weaken the Aquitanian duke. Conveniently, the recent Arab incursion could aid Charles in possibly getting rid of Odo and reclaim his duchy, absorbing it into the Frankish kingdom. With his request falling on the deaf ears of Mayor Charles, Odo had no other choice than to ride his host back to the besieged city of Toulouse in haste, as it was rumored that with dwindling supplies, it was to fall any day. The Aquitanian host reached the vicinity of Toulouse in early June. Odo was aware of the general numbers and composition of the Umayyad army, and it seemed that it hadn't changed during his absence. Being mindful that morale behind the city walls was plummeting, and being short on time and tactical options, in the morning of the 9th of June, Odo mustered a strong contingent of his most experienced riders and led the charge in a hope of breaking the siege. Upon seeing Aquitanian riders approaching, Umayyad infantrymen scrambled quickly, forming defense lines. Eventually, Odo's cavalry hit the first ranks of Al-Sam's battle line, bringing havoc and death to the invading soldiers. Though the battle raged, the dreadful effect of the charge soon faded and it became clear that Aquitaine simply didn't have the numbers to break the Umayyad line. Fortunately for his men, Odo was well aware of this and when the odds began to swing against the Aquitanians, he commanded his units to retreat. Having a negligible amount of his own cavalry, Al-Sam gave up the pursuit and, with the enemy repelled, he turned his attention back to the siege. The morale of his troops rose considerably in the wake of the skirmish, and for the rest of the day, even the defenders of the city could see the atmosphere of relaxation in the Umayyad camp, which lingered until nightfall. Having successfully pushed the Aquitanians back, Al-Sam didn't expect further attacks anytime soon. That night, however, he was quickly proved wrong. Under the cover of darkness, Duke Odo returned with the full strength of his army and seeing the lowered guard of the Umayyad camp, he gave the command to attack. The monotonous chirp of crickets suspended in a single moment as the ground trembled with the full host of Aquitanian riders surging to attack. In that moment, Al-Sam realized his mistake and tried to organize his men in a last-ditch attempt to turn the tide. But it was too late to stop the incoming strike. Odo's men stormed into the camp, mercilessly killing every Umayyad footman who reacted too slowly to flee the slaughter. Soon, Al-Sam was wounded within the chaos-engulfed camp, while his army was obliterated by the enemy riders. In a matter of minutes, the inconceivably uneven battle was over. Possibly thousands of Umayyad soldiers perished in the surprise attack. Governor Al-Sam managed to escape on the verge of death, but although he made it back to Narbonne, his wound proved to be fatal. The Battle of Toulouse was the first complete disaster for Umayyad expansion into Europe that stirred the political landscape in Al-Andalus 
and halted Muslim raids into Gaul for a couple of years. Duke Odo received universal acclaim for his victory, which strengthened his position as independent ruler of Aquitaine, and even received gifts from the Pope honoring his deeds. Yet Odo's successful lifting of the siege of Toulouse was just the beginning of his long and onerous struggle to maintain independence against the seemingly countless waves of raiding parties of the Umayyad Caliphate.